But first, there's a chance to do something a little bit different with your evenings this week. Museums across the country are opening at night. The Museums at Night Festival is organised to attract visitors who wouldn't normally go to a museum. And as it kicks off tonight, let's head to Oxfordshire, where Bethan Phillips has been soaking up the culture. I'm here four floors up at the top of the County Hall Museum, right in the middle of Abingdon. I've got panoramic views over the town on what is an absolutely stunning evening here. The sun is definitely shining for this very special event. Celebrating the Arts, part of the Museums at Night series. Actually, as I headed over to the museum from the car park tonight, the beautiful sound of opera floated over the town. People walking around here were craning their necks to try and figure out where it was coming from and it was actually radiating from here on the roof of County Hall where Opera Anywhere were performing. I spoke to Martha from the ensemble earlier and asked about what it was like to perform up here on the roof. Really inspiring actually it was a beautiful place it's a beautiful sunny day so it really helps your voice come out and shows the true natural ability of a human being. <laughs> your your voice was really floating down the high street what, what reaction did you get from from the audience up here and did you see anyone down in the street sort of craning their neck? Yeah, you do. You see people looking up and wondering what's going on and trying to figure out. And then the more we sang, the more people came up to hear us as well. So it was really lovely. Would it be fair to say this is one of the more unusual venues you've performed at? It's one of them. I performed in lots of different places. Last week uh, we were in Witham Woods and a few months ago I was singing in a cave. So we like to get around and do different things. <laughs> Well, Matt Stevens, museum officer, joins me now. So tell me a bit about the County Hall Museum. It's a fantastic building. It's obviously stood here since 1682. Um, it's been a landmark for the town. Um, now it's a museum which we've uh, been pushing to uh, become a real cultural hub in the town itself. Um, this year, just gone, we've uh, beaten all our targets and had over 30,000 visitors. Um, and we're hoping to increase footfall since then. And the exhibits here actually showcase 50,000 years of history, is that right? Absolutely. I mean, the social history of Abingdon goes back a long, long way. It claims to be one of the oldest towns uh, in England, uh, which is a big claim. Um, Archaeology, in fact, uh, from around the town and the River Thames uh, stretches back even further than that. So the history itself is incredibly long. Uh, not exactly datable, but we think it's very long indeed. Tell me what you've got going on this evening. Celebrating the arts. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, Museums at Night is a national scheme, and uh, we're really pushing for it this year with uh, opera, uh, street dancers, and all sorts of music going on on every level of the museum. It's a celebration of the arts, effectively. We're, we're looking at everything from our art exhibitions, um, our Roman... Uh, uh, silver and uh, jewellery work and um, everything from there to uh, dancing and, and music. Fantastic. And you're expecting 500 people here tonight. There is there is a bit of a, an attraction for coming to a museum out of hours, isn't there? Tell, tell me what you think is behind that. Well, it's a, it's a great opportunity for people that work during the day to come to a museum when they wouldn't normally get to. Um, and not only that, for regular visitors, it's an excellent opportunity to see the museum in a new light. So the fact that we're offering... Uh, completely free entry with all these attractions uh, is just one little part of, of the way we're trying to engage the community and uh, hopefully it, it pays off. Last year we had 300 people in three hours so we're hoping to have something similar this year. And you must be delighted with the, the weather tonight. That's going to bring people out, isn't it? We couldn't have asked for anything better. It is an absolutely cloudless sky, fantastic weather, and we're hoping to have the setting sun drop in behind the, uh, the Opera Girls for an aria right at the end of the evening. Fantastic. Thanks, Matt. Thanks very much. So there's lots of events throughout the evening here. As you heard, jazz, street dancing, opera, and events are going on until 9 o'clock. Fun, fun, fun. Beth and Phillips on the roof at the Abingdon County Hall Museum with her hat and shades on. What a beautiful, beautiful evening. The sun is streaming in the windows of the studio I'm sitting in at the moment. That's just one of the museums taking part in museums at night. But, you know, this year, this has been getting bigger and bigger every single year. This year, there's a total number of 648 events happening right across the country. Museums at Night kicks off tonight, runs... Uh, till the 16th, so right across the weekend, and we'll find out a bit more about it. Um, how it's developed over the years, and uh, which of the events are that we really shouldn't miss. Now, 
Museums at Night. It's underway as of this evening. Rosie Clark is from Culture 24, who helped put it all together. Hi, Rosie. Hello. Now, I've talked about it on the programme before, but I've only been doing this show for two and a half years, and I guess you've been going a bit longer than that. When did it start? Um, oh, here at Culture 24, we've been running the festival since 2009. And why was it set up? Um, well, the idea is um, that if you work 9 to 5, 9 to 5.30, it's actually quite difficult to get to visit museums, galleries, heritage sites, um, particularly, you know, with our busy lives and challenges at weekends and things. So with after-hours events... Um, like themed together in one big festival um, it really throws the spotlight on the terrific museums and galleries that we have here in the UK and um, by everybody working together to offer this terrific programme um, we've got about 650 events this year so wherever you are there's sure to be something going on near you. What evidence do you have over the last five six years that actually you are bringing in a, a new audience a different audience? Yeah every year um, the number of visits has risen and um, there's about all oh, 35% of visitors who always say I have never been to this venue before and there's this this little fraction of a few thousand people who say I have actually never been to any cultural venue before but because of museums at night and because of the exciting event programming they're taking a chance stepping through the door um, to find out what's actually going on um, right on their doorstep. Now we were at the Abingdon County Hall Museum a little earlier on where opera has been going on on the roof so, so clearly this series of, of days of doors being opened at night isn't just about seeing the regular exhibits it's about doing something a little bit special. Yes, yeah. I mean, it's absolutely magical after hours. Just the atmosphere is different as, you know, in these beautiful evenings as the sun is setting. Um, there's quite a few sort of historic houses that are lighting up by torchlight, um, by candlelight. You can do torchlight tours. Um, there's a lot of places that uh, are bringing out objects that aren't normally on display that you can find out about. Or you might be able to get a secret behind-the-scenes access to things that the public can't usually visit. But there's also a whole range of programming. There's all kinds of musical events, as, as I'm sure you've heard. Um, there's going back in time with costumes and food and cocktails and dancing. Um, a whole range of really creative programming. I'm liking the sound of that. Now, I appreciate with nearly 650 events, and you don't want to show too much favouritism, but just, just pick out one or two that you really think encapsulate what this is all about? Oh, well, I've got to give a shout-out to the clusters. Now, these are in cities where all of the museums and galleries and the heritage sites are all coming together and all offering really exciting events on the same night. So, for example, tomorrow night, there'll be an art bus going between seven different galleries in Birmingham, and there'll also be the Manchester After Hours events. Um, that's also tomorrow night on Thursday. Then on Friday night, it's light night, which completely completely takes over Liverpool. Everyone will be out on the town going between lots and lots of different venues, while on Friday and Saturday it's the late shows in Newcastle and Gateshead, which again have hundreds of events that you can get to um, on a, a bus linking them all and uh, with a big glow stick around your neck. But if you want like unique one-off events, um, I would say that uh, there's a museum that's literally just opened up today in Rochester, the Huguenot Museum. So very few people will have had the chance to see it. And they're doing their first ever late opening on Friday. Um, there's the Museum of Witchcraft down in Boscastle in Cornwall. Such an atmospheric place, and they're going to be lit up by candlelight. That will really take you back. Wow. Or then there's like the National Glass Centre up in Sunderland. They are doing an 80s cocktail-themed event. So watching the Tom Cruise film, Cocktail, everyone's dressing up, everyone's dancing, and they've got their glass blowers blowing cocktail glasses. Now, that really <laughs> appeals. Now, you've taken me from Sunderland to Boscastle to Rochester. You really have triangulated the whole country there. I absolutely take my hat off to you. Now, we've talked about sleepover events in the past where you really do spend a night at the museum. Are they happening again? Yes, they are. Now, quite a few have sold out, um, but there are a few that still do have tickets. So, for example, at Portsmouth Historic Dockyard, they've got a family dockyard sleepover um, at the Museum of the Royal Navy and Action Stations. And if you want to take your family along to that uh, you can also play laser quest with them um, then on the Saturday night over in Chichester at the Novium Museum they've got another family sleepover um, and in Kent in uh, Birchington the Powell Cotton Museum which has a lot of taxidermy it's a good one for people who are fans of animals they always do a terrific family sleepover and that still has a few tickets left too what a weekend Rosie thank you for just picking out some of the highlights for me that's Rosie Clark from Culture 24 behind museums at night kicked off 
tonight. It's happening right now and for the next four days.